So we're going to pick up in the middle of this section talking about mixtures of gases and um, refer to underwater again. So deep sea diving. When a diver breathes compressed air, which is necessary um, when you're underwater because of the increased pressure from the water, you're getting a higher concentration of the air, but also a higher partial pressure of oxygen. So that leads to an elevated concentration of oxygen in your tissues, which, you know, oxygen's a good thing, but too much of a good thing is a bad thing, right? Um, there is such a thing as oxygen toxicity. So oxygen toxicity would happen above um, a partial pressure of 1.4 atmospheres of oxygen. So that's up in this range. Um, hypoxia, that prefix hypo means below. So this is low oxygen, oxygen starvation. This happens when there's not enough oxygen partial pressure. So that's gonna happen down here around point, point 0.1. At the surface, air has a partial pressure of oxygen of 0.21 atmospheres. And that's a good place to be. So just remember, everything is toxic at some point, right? So then let's not be afraid of anything that's a chemical because you need oxygen to live, but too much oxygen will kill you. Breathing compressed air, you also get higher partial pressures of the other gases in the air, and a predominant one is the nitrogen. So at the surface, um, air is 78% nitrogen. So if your total pressure is one atmosphere, bless you, then the partial pressure of nitrogen is 0.78 atmospheres, or 78% of that. 30, 30 meters below the surface, the total pressure of the air you're breathing needs to be four atmospheres. So then the partial pressure of nitrogen is 78% still of that total pressure. So now it's 3.12 atmospheres. Too much nitrogen in your tissues can lead to nitrogen narcosis, also known as rapture of the deep, has symptoms similar to alcohol intoxication. Probably not a great idea when you're scuba diving or deep sea diving to have impaired judgment. So the way you can get around having issues of oxygen toxicity or nitrogen narcosis is to breathe different mixtures of gases. Instead of just compressed air, there are other mixtures that are available. So one of them shows up in this problem here. A diver breathes a heliox mixture. So heliox is helium and oxygen. So you can't get nitrogen narcosis from this. And the amount of oxygen in the helium can be made appropriate to whatever pressure you're going to be breathing. So this, um, this mixture has an oxygen mole fraction of 0.05. So that means the helium fraction is 0.95. What must the total pressure be for the partial pressure of oxygen to be 0.21 atmospheres? This is our preferred partial pressure of oxygen. This is what our bodies like. So if this is the mole fraction of oxygen, what's the total pressure need to be? Well, the equation that we've used for that is that the partial pressure of the oxygen is equal to the mole fraction of oxygen times the total pressure. So we're told that we want a partial pressure of the oxygen of 0.21 atmospheres. And we're told that the mole fraction of oxygen is 0.050. We want to know what P total is. So we have an equation, it just needs to be rearranged. So P total will equal the partial pressure of oxygen divided by the mole fraction of oxygen. Two. 
So to function well with this Heliox mixture, it must be at a pressure of 4.2 atmospheres. Now you couldn't breathe that at the surface because your lungs would like expand and you wouldn't be able to contract them or they could possibly blow up, right? Not good. But if you're underwater, every 10 meters, there's an increase of one atmosphere of pressure. So this would probably be around 30 meters under the water, this would be a good, uh, good mixture to be breathing. So what they'll do is they'll have two tanks, one of the Heliox and one of compressed air, and as you go deeper and deeper, you move from the compressed air to the Heliox, and then as you come back up, you move back, and so you can monitor and keep your oxygen okay that way. Any questions? Mm -hmm. um, I think that this, this equation is something that I give you a lot, it, there's a big old list of equations. The oxygen mole fraction that has no unit associated with it is just 0.050. Right. Because it's moles of oxygen over total moles of gas, and the moles cancel out. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Different gas law like formulas, will those be given or do those need to be memorized? Like, um, um, I will have to look. I'll have to look at that. They can all be derived from PV equals NRT, um, but I'll have to look at that. Collecting gases. Um, a convenient way to collect gases is to have them displace water from a container. So let's jump ahead and look at a picture. So we can take a, a beaker full of water, invert it into a large dish of water, and the water will stay in here. Atmospheric pressure can actually support water to about 32 feet because water is less dense than mercury. So we've got this inverted beaker of water. Over here we have our chemical reaction that's generating hydrogen gas. We want to collect the hydrogen gas. So we've got a stopper here with a hole in it and there's a, a glass tube that's going to direct the, the hydrogen gas into this beaker. So this opening here, the, the gas comes out, it's less dense, so it goes up. It's not going to come out the bottom and escape. It goes up, and as it starts to fill this up, it pushes the water out. So up here, we're collecting our hydrogen gas. But we don't just have hydrogen, we also have water vapor. Because here we have water with an, a space above it, and so the water will begin to evaporate. So the water evaporates, and so what we have is a mixture of gas. So the partial pressure of the water vapor, or the water in the gas state, we call the vapor pressure. That depends only on the temperature. We'll talk about why that is later. So you can use a table to find out the pressure uh, partial pressure of water vapor. You just look at the temperature, you measure the temperature, and then you look it up in this table, or a table like this. This one is not very detailed. It just gives five, five degree increments. So 25 degrees Celsius, kind of a room temperature. The pressure from the water vapor would be 23.78. Um, at 100 degrees, the, the vapor pressure of water is equal to one atmosphere, 760. So let's do an example. A sample of acetylene is collected over water. So it could be a similar setup to that picture we just looked at. The total gas pressure is 738 torr and the volume is 523 milliliters. At the temperature of the gas, 23 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water is 21 torr many grams of acetylene are collected? Well, let's pull out some numbers and label them and then try to figure out what to do. Well, we've got 738 torr. That's obviously a pressure. What kind of a pressure? It's the total pressure, right? It says that right there. The total gas pressure. Um, the volume 
is 523 milliliters. The temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. The vapor pressure of water, that's the partial pressure of water, at this temperature is 21 torr. And we're trying to find out how many grams of that gas. Well, a good candidate for an equation to use would be the ideal gas law, right? PV equals NRT. Because we've, um, we've got some pressure information, we've got volume and temperature. We could use this to find the amount of gas in moles. We know the formula, we can convert moles to grams, right? But there are two gases here. There's water vapor and there's acetylene. So this is a wet gas, not a dry gas. So the pressure that we use needs to be the pressure of the gas that we're interested in. We could use the total pressure, but then this N is the moles of gas total, the moles of acetylene plus the moles of water. And that's not what we need. So we need the vapor pressure of the acetylene. So Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures tells us that the total pressure is equal to the sum of the partial pressures. So it's the acetylene pressure plus the water vapor pressure. So how do we find out what the partial pressure of the acetylene is? We subtract, right? You take the total, you subtract one of the pieces that gives you the other piece. So the acetylene pressure equals the total pressure, 738, minus the vapor pressure of water, 717 torr. It's important to use the correct pressure. Okay, so we need to rearrange this equation. So N equals PV over RT. The units on R tell us what the units on pressure, volume, and temperature have to be. What unit do I need for pressure? atmospheres. So the conversion, it's always one step, would be one atmosphere over 760 torr. The torrs cancel out. We could do the math, but we could also write this as 717 over 760. Start saying atom, writing atoms, ATM. That saves us from having to write down intermediate value and punch it back into the calculator, which you certainly can do. There's nothing wrong with it. So that's the pressure in atmospheres. The volume, so 523 milliliters. How many liters is that? 0.523. So I'm going to divide by R, 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And then I need the temperature. I have to make this into Celsius. So it's going to be 296. I need to make it into Kelvin. It's in Celsius. So atmospheres cancel, meters cancel, Kelvins cancel. I'm left with moles. 717 divided by 760 times 0.523 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 296. Point zero two zero three one three moles. So we need the molar mass of acetylene. 
I'm going to slip that in way up at the top. Two carbons and two hydrogens. The 26 point what? 0 0.26. 026, thanks. So to find the mass, I'm going to take the number of moles. I ran out of space over there, so I have to write it down again. Moles of acetylene, and I use the molar mass. Grams on the bottom, moles on the top. Anybody paying attention? See, I zoom in and I can't see what's going on over there and sometimes I get upside down. Is that right? No. I realized it wasn't right when I went to cancel the grams and the moles. I'm like, oh shoot, that doesn't work out. Always units. Okay, try that again. I want moles on the bottom and grams on the top. And then my moles cancel. There, that's better. Point zero three six. Point five two eight. Eight eight grams. So that would round to point five two nine grams of acetylene. Bless you. Any questions? Mm-hmm. Right, this is a variation on a, just a straightforward ideal gas law problem. So the ideal gas law part is in here, but there's a little bit tacked on at the beginning where we need to use Dalton's law of partial pressures. And then there's a little piece tacked on at the end where we have to convert moles to grams. And so there's all sorts of variations. And on the exam, I guarantee there will be a problem that's different than any you've seen before. But we've learned all the pieces. And if you know the pieces, you should be able to stick them together to solve the problem. You might need to use a density, right? Or a mass by difference or all kinds of things. There's just so many different things that can be done. Let's do another one. A common way to make hydrogen gas in the lab is to place a metal such as zinc in hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid reacts with the metal to produce hydrogen gas, which is then collected over water. Suppose a student, student carries out this reaction and collects a total of 154.4 milliliters of gas at a pressure of 742 millimeters of mercury and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. What mass of hydrogen gas in milligrams does the student collect? Do we have a gas mixture here? No. That's not the right answer. No is not the right answer. So what is the right answer? Yes. Yes, yes we do. How do we know that? This little phrase, oops. Collected over water. If it's collected over water, there will be water vapor mixed with my gas. Always. Okay, so anytime you see collected over water, you're going to have to think about vapor pressure of water. They didn't give me the vapor pressure of water. What do I do? Just ignore it? No, we need to go look it up. So here's temperature, right? So I'm going to go back to this table and look, find my temperature, 25. 
And here's the vapor pressure of the water. 23.78 millimeters of mercury. 23.78, millimeters of mercury. So that is the partial pressure of water. They give me a pressure. It says, collects this gas at a pressure of 742 millimeters of mercury. Is that the pressure of the hydrogen gas? No, it's the pressure of the mixture. So this is the total pressure. If I'm calculating the mass of hydrogen, do I want to use the total pressure? No. I want to use the pressure of just the hydrogen. So that's the total pressure minus the pressure of the water. Seven forty two minus twenty three point seven eight seven eighteen point two two millimeters of mercury. I'm given a volume of a hundred and fifty four point four milliliters. That's equal to 0.1544 liters. And I'm told that the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. I have to convert that to Kelvin. So that's 298 Kelvin. So this is following very much like the previous example. We have a wet gas, so we have to subtract the partial pressure of the water to get the partial pressure of the gas we're interested in. We use that to calculate the moles of gas, and then we're gonna convert to mass. So N equals PV over RT. So the pressure as is usually the case is in millimeters of mercury or tor. So I'm just going to use this little kind of shortcut here. 718.22 divided by 760 atmospheres. The volume I already converted, 0.1544 liters. You should always write your units in this equation. Have I mentioned that before? Yes, I have. Always write the units. Because that one time that you don't, it'll be the wrong unit and you won't notice it. 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. That's like my little gas law security blanket right there. 298 Kelvin. So the Kelvins cancel. The atmospheres cancel, the liters cancel. That reassures me of two things. I've got my correct units, and I've got my numbers in the right places. If I got um, pressure down here, um, then it wouldn't cancel out with this atmospheres. Okay, so that is going to be N. 718.22 divided by 760 times 0.1544 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 298. And I should have three significant figures, so I want to make sure I keep three significant figures and two extras along for the ride. Moles of hydrogen. What's the formula for hydrogen gas? H2. Waiting for the screen to catch up with me. We're reconnecting. Lovely. 
hydrogen gas. We need the formula to be correct because that's going to affect our molar mass. So I'm going to try to be more careful this time. I'm going from moles. I'm trying to get to milligrams, but I'm going to go to grams first. Our moles in the bottom. Molar mass of hydrogen is 2.016 because it's H2. And then I want milligrams, grams in the bottom. Remember, milli means 10 to the minus 3. So 10 to the minus 3 is in the bottom. <laughs> So I've got that amount of moles times 2.016 divided by 1 EE negative 3. I'm getting 12.029 be milligrams. And so rounding that would be 12.0 milligrams. Any questions? You should try to get comfortable with milli, milli to not anything calculations, like milligrams to grams, milliliters to liters. Because in grams, this is 0 0.012029 grams. To convert that to milligrams, I'm going to move the decimal point three places. Milligram is a little unit, so I move the decimal point to make the number larger. The hard part is moving the decimal point in the correct place. And then occasionally people will screw up, like they've got 12 and they convert it to grams and they'll say 0.12. You only moved to two places, so that's not good enough. It's got to be three.